Hyde, Manchester, seen to the UK's Dr Death, who on the 31st of January 2000 was found guilty of murdering 15 elderly patients under his care. The figure is now estimated at around 250 over a 20 year period. But the question we pose here is, what is the real long lasting legacy of Dr Harold Shipman? Our conclusion is that it has left us with a situation where the NHS job is to keep people alive at all costs. Currently the policy is that you are not allowed to die. The days of a wink and a nod to a close relative in order to do, in their opinion, the right thing are now a distant memory. Keeping people alive is now big business for the private sector where the average dementia patient is charged £75,000 a year. Such care homes are now what we will refer to as a human paradox, where compassionate people care for elderly people, who if they were compass mentis, would probably welcome a Harold Shipman character into their personal space for just a few moments. The truth of the matter is that many people in their ambiguous lost stage of life wake up to have their nappy changed, get spoon fed three times a day and then get plonked in a big room with other patients in front of a TV to never watch a programme ever again. Some, not all, may receive a visitor a few times a week if they are lucky. There is no other word to describe these places. They are asylums. For us, Jimmy's Law is a no-brainer. We can't tell you who Jimmy is, because he is still alive. But what we can tell you is that he would absolutely despise the situation he currently finds himself in. He was, we use the past tense here, a man of simplicity, liberty and positive spirit. He enjoyed a pint, a bet and a good holiday. Family was a vital part of his life. And he would hate the idea of being a guilt burden in any way, shape or form. As an old paratrooper soldier, we are convinced, if given the option, he would have fallen on his sword. So the policy is simple. A living will and testament that is allowed for every person entering the last quarter of their lives at 60 years old. If each individual does not take ownership of their own death, we already know that somebody else will. The current policy is for the NHS to keep people alive at all costs, diverting resources away from much younger people. But there is a caveat. The word compassion cannot be allowed to enter this debate. Once it arrives, one person's compassion is another person's murder. It has to be the choice of the individual, the lead actor, as to how they play out their final scene. Clear choices, clear communication, can help families navigate end of life to avoid pain, depression, physical and mental decline, loss of confidence, and the embarrassment of incontinence. Currently, 10 countries around the world have such policies in place. Switzerland, Holland, Belgium, Austria, Spain, Luxembourg, Colombia, but most notably for the UK, our Commonwealth neighbours, Canada, New Zealand and Australia. In the USA, currently, 11 states allow assisted dying. For those in the UK who want to live forever, we are sure that medical advancement will help you as much as possible and we wish you well with your decision and journey. But for those of us who want to plan our demise to be quick and peaceful when the time comes and the situation is right in line with our own wishes, the question is a simple one. Who else does this harm?